Hey everyone, uh, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Kingdom of Loathing. Um, so, doing more of the Zeppelin stuff, and I've made myself musky. I smell like a Leonard, and I have more stench damage. But more importantly, I can hide in these bushes. Oh, come on, I smell like one, though. I scared away six of them, though, that's all right. Sweet roll, Alabama. It's so stupid. This is all exactly what I, like, wasn't hoping it would be. What happens if I do this? Oh, you make your night move, which is to flee into the darkness. Great. Cool. Oh, we got another muscle point. How much will it take to level me up now? I've got 190 muscle. Jeez. Take 299. Wowzers. Damn. Oh, are these guys are these guys going away as I as I clear them out? That's kind of interesting. Leonard snare, huh? Uh trap designed around the peculiar anatomy of the big mountain Leonard and has only one use. Interesting. Huh, okay. Sudea gains a pound. Nice. All right, let's see if I can even find that. Leonard snare. Oh, you're fighting a Leonard. So the snare and hide behind a bush. Moments later, you hear yelling and a rustling as a Leonard caught in it. Wow, these things are really effective. You release the Leonard and it instantly attaches itself to your face. A little whirlwind, whirlwind of fur and claws and blood. Actually, I guess the blood is yours. It swipes your groin and then acknowledges that he's to blame. Let's up the ante. We got Leonard's skin. God, this is... Uh, skin of Leonard, Leonard is black as pitch, smooth as glass, and as sleek as a Leonard. Before it was skinned by the Leonard Skinner, it was used to keep the Leonard's innards inner. God. Just kill me now. Let's drink one of these. Don't want to get too drunk too quick. And let's, um... What about you? A little better. Uh, what does this one do? Here we go. That's what I wanted. It's iron with bad intent. Yeah. And let's join in. We got another three. So it looks like they are actually disappearing, which is good. Um, I'll take another break, clear some more of them out, and then uh, I'll see you guys when I'm done with that. So um, I just took a whole bunch of potions and accidentally made myself small for 30 adventures. My mysticality is limited to 50, as is every other stat, as you can see. So uh, Okay, cool. Luckily, all the other buffs I stacked on myself make it so I can actually fight. Cool, yeah. All right, that's fine. Mostly fine. Let's take more Leonard Musk. Yeah. Now I'm all musky again. Yeah, we got six of them out. So I think I need to kill 80 of them, and I'm not sure if... Um... Oh, there we go. So the scene and see the mobs cleared out or forcibly cleared by you so you can approach the Red Zeppelin. Do a little Misty Mountain hop over a few slain enemies as you approach the boarding ramp. Oh, wait. I don't actually have to be here. Some stragglers or the Red Zeppelin itself. 150... Let's see, why don't we? Z Zeppel intro. Nice, nice. That's good. That's good. You sneak aboard the Zeppelin, hoping you can hold off on being discovered by the Red Army long enough that you can painstakingly assemble clues as to what the army's up to and where you might find Copperhead. Wrong Copperhead this time. Sneak into a seat, check the magazine pocket on the back of the seat in front of you, and see it contains 
a pamphlet called Project Red Zeppelin Brief. That was easier than expected. Thumbing through, it looks like the Red Zeppelin is the front line of a full-scale Red Army assault on the kingdom. Zeppelin's full of Red Army troops and dignitaries, including Copper, Copperhead himself. Now all you have to do is fight an entire army, find their probably insane and bloodthirsty leader, and Bob's your uncle. You're fighting a Red Skeleton. Okay. So probably about a hundred years ago, there was this comedian called Red Skeleton. Yeah. How old is this fucking guy? Well, he died in 97. And he was born 107 years ago. So what I'm getting at here is that this is somewhat of a dated reference, but whatever. Aye, looks like the Red Army's dabbling in necromancy to turn the tide of war. This is a magically animated skeleton that's been painted bright red from its red toes to its red jawbone. Clacks red teeth at you ready to supplement that natural redness with a little of your blood. Assuming, of course, you're not a blue blood. Red Army also has these skeletons putting on shows to entertain children, but this one seems more likely to disembowel you than put a puppet show on for you. Yeah, that also appears to be, um, this might be a reference to the uh, Red Skeletons from Castlevania. That's a lot of damage. Uh, as you fight, you explore the cargo component of the Zeppelin. Fill it with a bunch of boring stuff, but you do get a slightly better sense of the ship's layout. And we got a red box. Let's take a look at that. And the recent items. Dump out these supplies. Red letter, red velvet cake, and red hot poker. Too full for it, huh? Yeah, I thought so. Uh, red letter. It's a B. Apply the red letter to your forehead. We're red lettered. Plus 15 to monster level. Fuck. Damn it. That really sucks. Red hot poker. Plus 15 hot damage. It's a one-handed club. Oh, it is playtime. All right, where are we at? Red hot poker. Yeah, it's 17 to 33, which is one better than this. And it does 15 hot damage. It's a hole for doing something with a fire. Dragging embers around, making holes in ashes. You know what? You're just going to hit stuff with it. Way easier than figuring out what it's really for. Well, let's see if there's anything else better in here. Not really. The uh, 16 to... What is this? I mean, it's power whatever now. But normally it's 16 to 32. Yeah. What does the Fleetwood Chain do? Weapon damage plus five. What about the black sword? Uh, more critical hit and plus seven weapon damage. Okay, much better. Um, this is weapon damage plus ten and every hit weakens the opponent. I'll take that. Perfectly fine by me. You're finding a red snapper. Your way through the zeppelin is blocked by a member of the red army. Get out of here. This is a restricted area. She snaps. Your mom's a restricted area, you reply snappily. Oh, snap. She snapped, snapping her fingers. It's on now. Oh, crap. She snapped one of your fingers. We lost a shitload of hit points. All right. Search the snapper's cabin, but everything you find has been snapped in half. Let's go crack that red box open again. Uh, red, red wine. Red X shield and a red velvet cake. Red X shield uh, adds 20 to your MP and HP. It's a shield. 11 damage reduction. Uh, this is a shield from the Red Army Red Box, made of stout cardboard set of Red Axe in the front of it. Come to think of it, this might be a piece of one of the cartons the Red Army ship stuff in. I don't use shields, but that's okay. Red Red Wine. It's decent booze. Red, bottle of Red Wine, which lazel, label bears the cryptic Red Army material handling code, Monkey Pack Him Rizla Upon the Sweet Depth Line. Oh, brother. Will this get me drunk? No. But only barely. Finding the man with the red buttons. Most mysterious operatives in the Red Army. His face is unremarkable. You wouldn't be able to pick him, up, pick him out of the lineup if you saw him again. His uniform is the same nondescript crimson as the rest of the Red Army. The only difference is he has four big, bright red buttons on his coat. Anyone who asks why tends to die quickly and messily. It's speculated that each button stands for a man he's killed, or a battleship he's sunk, or a game of canasta he's won, but I'm not about to ask him. All right. Hmm. You rifle through your fallen foe's possession, looking for a clue as to where the we clue as to where the leader's whereabouts. Find a note reading: "Do not enter Rob's cabin for any reason whatsoever." From this, you glean that Ron is in a cabin. We got three of the four red buttons. 
little red button like you might find on a garish trench coat or on the floor after you commit a justifiable act of violence against a garish trench coat or against a guy wearing a garish trench coat. Deals damage based on how many you have. That's kind of wild. Another red snapper. And another red box. A ticket take you. A ticket taker accosts you after the fight. Unable to produce a ticket, you're thrown overboard. Or a red butler. Tuck in one of the officers' quarters in the Red Zeppelin, startling a man in a crisp red tuxedo ironing a newspaper. Oh. Did Sir forget his hat? Oh, hold on, you are not, sir. What do what do you mean by barging into Sir's quarters before he has had his morning paper? Look, I'm an inventorer, and I am looking for you start by the butler and drops. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn, he says, then looks wistfully at the white carpet. Sadly off to spend the afternoon cleaning the blood out of the carpet again. Then he runs at you, iron raised and ready to strike. Well, it's hot. Jump on him. On the wall of the next year's fallen opponent, you see a map of the Zeppelins with an area marked Best Cabins. You note the location, assuming that Ron's cabin is probably one of the best ones, if not the best one. Cool. More red buttons. What if we... Uh, we only got one red button. Damn. Another red skeleton. After defeating your foe, you notice that one of the Zeppelin's janitors have left his, has left its key ring on a hook in the wall. Grab and unlock every door on the Zeppelin before flushing the keys down the toilet. Take that, random janitor. <laughs> Let's crack another one of these again. We got red rum and a red book. Oh my god, is that a reference to the Carl Jung? Uh, if you listen closely to this ancient tome, you can hear a badly compressed audio track whispering secret beauty tips. Oh, wait, no. I was hoping that it would be a reference to the... Uh, the Red Book, written by Carl Jung, famed psychologist and better than uh, Freud. Sorry, I had to remember that fucker's name. Another Redman. Oh, Slayer gained a pound. All right, seen a lot of these, huh? Let's crack open the the last red box, and then I'll. Uh, it's probably too much. Um, red, 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 red box. More wine and a red mask. Oh, like Mask of the Red Death. Imagine if Soro had a red suit instead of a black one, and also if he was a serial killer instead of a vigilante. This is the kind of mask that he would wear. Ooh, let's take a look at what I'm wearing now. You got the scalp of Gorgolok, which gives me muscle and weapon damage. This one gives me... Wait, is that it? Accessory. Oh, great. What do I have on right now? Boots, lapel pin, Boris's ring. Well, I don't really need the ghost damage, though it is nice. And I kind of just want to keep my stuff fresh, so more spooky damage and uh, more HP is nice. I'll roll with that for a bit. Another red butler. Cool. All right, I uh, I should probably pause it here until the next thing happens. Uh, so I'll see you guys in just a bit. Okay, so uh, just after I ended that recording, this happened. You're fighting a red herring. This guy's a private in the Red Army. Not even a private first class, he's still in steerage. Still, something about him seems incredibly important and significant to the whole endeavor. Perhaps he's the key to finishing this quest. Probably not. I have nine adventures left of small. Search the herring's cabin but find nothing of interest. Who would have guessed? Well, damn. Oh my god, damn it. We got a Glark cable. Having unlocked all the doors, you managed to find out where the nicer cabins are. Another time to check a couple, but before you hear a guard coming and flee. A Glark cable. Instantly defeats monsters on the Red Zeppelin. Electrical cable with a proprietary fitting on one end labeled Glark battery only. God damn it, that was so dumb. All right, let's use the Glark cable. You plug the cable on the Zeppelin's nearest Glark port and hand the other end to your enemy, who's neatly vaporized when you flip the switch on next to the port. <laughs> and we got five red buttons. Let's try the red buttons. 
We're at 12 now, so. 56 damage. Oh, all of them, huh? Hmm. Well. I'll uh, be right back again. Scratch that. I decided to also start exploring this. Uh, you find a part of the temple where the floors collapse into a network of caves beneath. Thinking that now is as good a time as any to get some networking done, you carefully climb the pile of collapsed floor bits and begin to explore. You reach a three-way junction. One is lit by an eerie glow. One is ringed by a series of carved and perhaps oddly eroded glowing faces. Glowering faces. And from the depths of the third, you can hear an ominous growling. Oh, that's stupid. Where are we headed, boys? The glow, the glowering, or the growling? Um, let's go with the glow. Head down the passageway and emerge into the most video games of caverns. The vi cavern whose walls glow with bioluminescent fungus. Marvel for a while the beauty and the wonder of the cliche, then break off a piece and leave. Oh, it's an item to eat. Like a half moon, the little shelf of fungus is half moon shaped. Unlike a half moon, it glows with its own light rather than the reflected light of the sun. Unless you take it outside, in which case it technically glows with both of those things. Funny. Let's head back in. Another stone temple pirate. Cool. Yeah, I've only got one more turn of beaten up, so I may as well just let it rock. And this is, yeah, it's a club. Cool. That reminds me. Actually, can I buy no more, more stuff now? Because I'm level 13. Smackdown. Northern, oh, it goes to 15. Northern Exposure or Northern Explosion. Uh, either we get Passive Cold Resistance or Powerful Smack that deals cold damage. Well, Northern Explosion is a lot cooler. But um, I do like passives much more. I'm fine with that, though. Let's head back to the Hidden Temple. Oh, we got Stone Wool. Let's go for the glowering this time. Head down the face-ringed passage, encountering more and more faces along the way until you're certain those faces were carved by the people who originally built the temple rather than forming spontaneously. <laughs> You eventually reach a massive chamber dominated by an underground lake surrounded by dozens of fountains in the shape of massive carved heads, with water pouring down their tongues into the lake. Upon closer inspection, you realize the water is flowing not down the tongues, but up them. This must be the source of the magic that powers all those traps in the things in the temple above, you say aloud to yourself. If the water is magic to flow up the statue's tongues, it must be magic enough to flow up yours. I mean, up mine. Test the theory by dipping your tongue in the lake. A burst of water surges upwards in your mouth, down your throat, filling with power. And water, which reminds you, you need to pay your power and water bills. You should get out of your cave and do that. Oh, I think I actually need to do that in the real world. Uh, what does hidden power do? Oh, it just gives me plus 15 to everything. Oh, that would have been nice when I was uh, low, but now I'm up to 200 of everything. We got an eye patch and an ancient poison dart. Um, let's sidle. Oh, well. Done that, haven't I? I'll pause the recording here again, and then uh, I'll come back. Hi, everyone. I'm stupid, and I forgot that I'm actually supposed to be exploring here in the Hidden City, not in the Hidden Temple, even though it says Hidden City here. So, um, yeah, we're, uh, uh yep. we're finding a dense liana. Before we can get going, you're going to have to hack through this curtain of vines, where a slightly different shade of green than the grass that carpets the jungle floor. Shouldn't be a big deal. Uh, we got exotic jungle fruit. Nice. Uh, full of fruit yourself. Minus 25 to monster level. Kind of weird jungle fruit you can't identify. It's good food, though. Another dense liana. And more. Oh, Slayer got a pound. Nice. Oh, heir apparent. Inside the shrine, you find an altar carved with an adorable little figure. Consult your notes and identify him as... Ancient God of Thunder and Lightning. Top of the altar has a bowl shaped impression, which is to say some air which is to say it's some air doing its best impression of a bowl. Oh. Put your head in the impression and are stuck with a vision. Behind a thick oaken door in a tall office building, a ghostly figure sits in a leather chair, absent mindedly squeezing a sphere of polished stone and grumbling about the McCluskey file. 
fades, and you emerge from the altar, blinking as your eyes adjust to the light. You recognize the building from the vision. It's like right in front of you. Cool. Uh, let's do this one then. Oh, yeah. Inside the shrine, you find an altar with a snake-like figure with a fiery tail carved on it. It's Charcoal. 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 God of fire and shit. Uh, now that I think, this episode has been going on for a little while, so I'll finish reading this, and then I'll cut it. Uh... Altered a round impression, which gives the all-round impression of being a good receptacle for a round object of some description. The five ball in your sack emits a bright glow. Oh, cool. In it, a ghostly figure taps its foot impatiently as a bowling ball polishing machine does its work on a stone sphere. The vision fades, and as you stumble out of the shrine, one of maybe the bowling alley you passed on the way isn't the one from the vision. You should check it out. Um... Yeah, I've been Alfred. This has been Kingdom of Loathing. Sorry for the abrupt end, but uh, I'm getting back into recording these. I'll see you guys next next week now. And uh, yeah, I've been Alfred. Kingdom of Loathing. Free to play. <laughs>